Hey guys, this is Michael from Conquer Chemistry. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to name ionic compounds that contain polyatomic ions. Polyatomic ions, what are those? Simply said, polyatomic ions are ions that are made up of multiple atoms. So an ion is anything with a charge, uh, for example, like chlorine, because that chlor chloride, because that's a charge, it's, a, it's an ion. And polyatomic ions is made of multiple ions, so I mean multiple atoms, such as these right here. These are your most common polyatomic ions, so let's look at one of them, like NH4+. Plus. Uh, it's a single ion, but it's made up of multiple atoms, and made up of 1N and 4Hs. And those are the list of uh, the most co common polyatomic ions. You're probably going to have to memorize these. Some teachers actually give you the list, so double check with your teacher if you need to memorize these or uh, if you'll be provided with the list during your, your tests. And then we're going to go through a couple examples. I listed the rules right here. We're going to go through these examples following these rules. And then by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly how to name ionic compounds with polyatomic ions. So for example, Na2CO3, the first step is to separate the compounds into two parts. This is where it's very important that you at least recognize which of these are polyatomic ions. So when you look at this, you should be able to separate this into Na and then Cl3, with Cl3 being your polyatomic ion. So in the first part, you just name the element or the polyatomic ion. So the first part is Na, which is just sodium. And then it says the second part, um, if your second part's an element, you're going to add IDE to the root. But if it's a polyatomic atomic ion, then we just name it. So CO3 is just a polyatomic ion and it's carbonate, so we just name it. And then that, that's the name, sodium carbonate. Not too bad, huh? So the next example, MgOH2, first step separated into two parts. First part's going to be Mg, second part's OH, from this polyatomic ion. Uh, first part, we just name the element or the polyatomic ion. Mg is just magnesium. And then second part, because this is a polyatomic ion, we just name that, and OH is hydroxide. So the name for MgOH2 is uh, magnesium hydroxide. Third one, separate, it, separate these into two parts. So the two parts are going to be NH4 and PO4. So we have you know NH4 right here, and then we have uh, the PO4. So those are two parts. The first part, we just named the element or the polyatomic ion. NH4 is ammonium. And then the second part is PO4, and it's a polyatomic ion, so we just name it. So it becomes uh, ammonium phosphate. All right, so the first three examples is we, we took the formula, we turned into the name, but... In these last two examples, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to have the name and we're going to turn it into the chemical formula. So the first one, copper 2 chlorate. Copper is Cu, and if you're not really sure what this Roman numeral is, it just tells you the charge of the copper. And the reason why we have a Roman numeral there is because copper is a transition metal, meaning it can have multiple charges. So copper, and then it's going to have a positive 2 charge, and then chlorate is ClO3 minus, then we double check if these charges are going to cancel each other out, and they don't because positive 2 does not cancel out of negative 1, and if they don't cancel out, then we crisscross, giving us copper 1, or just copper, and then chlorate 2, and then when you have multiple polyatomic ions, you're going to have to put a parenthesis around it. Just indicate that there's two chlorates. And last example, lithium acetate. So lithium is Li, and because it's in the first column of the periodic table, it's going to be a positive one charge. And then acetate is this polyatomic ion right here, C2H3O2. Uh, and then this has a negative 1 charge, so double check if those charges cancel out, and they do, because positive 1 and negative 1 cancel out, making the compound overall neutral. Then it's going to be LiC2H3O2, and that's the formula for lithium acetate. And one more example, because I just realized and never really gave you an example where the second element, I mean the second part is an element. So let's say we're working with NH4... 
So we break it down to two parts. The two parts are going to be NH4 and then S. So the first part, we just name it NH4 is ammonium. And then the second part, because it's an element, we're going to add IDE to the root. So S is sulfur, but we add IDE to the root, that makes it sulfide. And then that's the name, ammonium sulfide. Well, hopefully this helped with helped you learn how to name ionic compounds of polyatomic ions. This is the common polyatomic ions, and you're probably gonna have to memorize this. So it's it's really not too bad. Just do some flashcards, and it'll it'll come easy. And then if you found this video to be helpful, give me give me a thumbs up, uh, a like, same thing. Subscribe to the channel because throughout the semester I'll be posting a ton of videos that's gonna help you with this class and help you conquer chemistry. And if you like my teaching style and you're interested in individual tutoring, check out www.conquerchemistry.com slash online tutoring. I'll include a link in the description below so you can just click on that and go directly to the website. And keep practicing and I'll see you next time.